Let's have this activity wherein we're going to sketch the rational fraction y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. And to sketch this one, we're going to uh, perform the following steps. And the first step is to determine the y and x intercepts. Alright, so first, if we're going to determine the x intercept here, we're going to set y be equal to 0. And if we're going to set y b equal to 0, then this will now be 0 equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. And this will give us 0 equals 1 plus x squared. Because if we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared, the resulting equation will be 0, plus one, uh, 0 equals 1 plus x squared. Now, if you're going to notice here, 1 plus x squared, if I'm going to transpose negative 1 to the left side, so we have negative 1 equals x squared, and if we're going to solve for the values of x here, square root of negative 1 will give us positive and negative imaginary number. Therefore, if this is the case, then we can say that there is no x-intercept, alright? So we have no x-intercept in this given function, meaning the graph will not pass across the x-axis, right? So solving for uh, y-intercept here, so solving for y-intercept, we're going to set x be equal to 0. And if we're going to set x equal to 0, then this will now be y equals 1 plus 0 squared all over 1 minus 0 squared. And if we're going to simplify this expression, y will be equal to 0. So the graph will pass at y equals 1. Right? So we have a y-intercept. We have no x-intercept. So the next step is to test for symmetry. Alright, so let us test for symmetry. So testing for symmetry, does it have a symmetry with respect to the x-axis? So we're going to change uh, y to negative y. So changing y to negative y, let me just rewrite the equation here. So y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. So changing y to negative y, we have negative y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. So in here, if we're going to compare the resulting equation to the given equation or the, the given function, there is a change in value. So we can say that there is no symmetry with respect to x-axis. Alright, so no symmetry with x-axis. The next test is to change x to negative x. So changing x to negative x, we have y equals 1 plus negative x quantity squared all over 1 minus negative x quantity squared. And if we're going to simplify this one, we'll be having y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. Now, if we're going to compare the resulting equation to the original equation, the equations are equal. The equations are equal. Now, we can say that there is a symmetry, alright? So, there is a symmetry with respect to the y-axis. And lastly, if we're going to change both, Right, so if we're going to change both x and y to negative x and negative y simultaneously, we have negative y equals 1 plus negative x squared all over 1 minus negative x squared. Right, so uh, that should be written outside. So if we're going to simplify this one, this is now negative y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. And if we're going to compare this resulting equation to the given function, there is a change in value, so there is no symmetry with respect to the origin. Alright, so there is no symmetry with respect to the 
origin. Okay, so the graph will only be symmetrical with respect to the y-axis. And when we say it is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, say that this is your y-axis and this is your x-axis, whatever you see on the left side will be mirrored on the right side. Now, for the next step is to determine the asymptotes. Alright, so we're going to determine asymptotes. First, we're going to determine the vertical asymptote. And to determine the vertical asymptote, we're going to set the denominator b equal to 0 and solve for the roots of x. So again, if we're going to rewrite the given function here, we have 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. So taking up the denominator here and equating it to 0, this will now be 1 minus x squared equals 0. Now, we can still factor out 1 minus x squared, so that will now be 1 plus x multiplied by 1 minus x, and this will now be equal to 0. So solving for the values of x here, we have x equals negative 1, right, for this root, and we have x equals positive 1 for this root. So these are now the equations of the vertical asymptotes. And for the horizontal asymptotes, right, so for the horizontal asymptote, the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, right? So this is in uh, the second degree and this is also in the second degree. If the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator, the equation of the horizontal asymptote will now be equal to y equals the coefficient of the highest degree of x in the numerator, which is equal to 1, all over the coefficient of the highest degree of x in the denominator, which is equal to negative 1. So 1 all over negative 1, this will give us y equals negative 1. This will now be the equation of the horizontal asymptote. Right, so for the next step, we're going to determine or locate the critical points. Right, so we're going to locate and classify the critical points. Again, let me just rewrite here our given function. So we have 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. So in here, solving for uh, y prime, this is now equal to 1 minus x squared multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of 1 plus x squared, right? So minus 1 plus x squared multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of 1 minus x squared because the given function is in the form of u over v. And the derivative of u over v is v du minus u dv all over Right, v squared, which is now equal to 1 minus x squared quantity squared. So if we're going to uh, continue further, we have 1 minus x squared. The derivative of 1 plus x squared is equal to 2x minus 1 plus x squared. The derivative of 1 minus x squared is equal to negative 2x all over 1 minus x squared raised to 2. So if we're going to simplify this one, we can factor out 2x in the numerator. So if we're going to factor out 2x now, the remainder will now be 1 minus x squared minus, right? So minus times negative, so that will give us plus 1 plus x squared. All over 1 minus x squared quantity squared. So collecting similar terms, negative x squared plus x squared, so this will basically cancel out, and 1 plus 1, so that will give us 2. So this is now equal to 2x multiplied by 2 all over 1 minus x squared raised to 2, or y prime is now equal to 4x all over 1 minus x squared raised to 2. Right? So now we have already solved for the first derivative. 
if we're going to equate this to 0, this is now equal to uh, 4x all over 1 minus x squared raised to 2. And if we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared raised to 2, so this will now be 0 equals 4x. So solving for x, x will be equal to 0. And if x is equal to 0, what is the value of y? So substituting x equals 0 to the given function, so that will give us 1 plus 0 squared all over 1 minus 0 squared. Or this will give us 1. Right? So the critical point that we have located is at 0, positive 1. And if we're going to perform the first derivative test here, taking up y prime, we have y prime equals 4x all over 1 minus x squared, quantity squared. So if we're going to draw a line in here, right? So if we're going to draw a line in here, this is 0, this is negative 1, and this is positive 1. Right? So... Performing the first derivative test, if x is equal to negative 1, what is the value of y prime? So we can bring out our calculator here and we input the expression for the first derivative which is 4x all over 1 minus x squared. Alright, so 1 minus x squared quantity raised to 2. So if x is equal to negative 1, the result in your calculator will be math error or in my case that is complex infinity because if you're going to substitute negative 1 in here, the, the denominator will be equal to 0 and you cannot divide a number by 0. So what we're going to do here is that we're just going to consider a value of x great, uh, less than 0. Say we're just going to have it at negative 0 0.5 and this one will also be positive 0.5. Five, right? So if x is negative 0 0.5, y prime will be negative. Right? So the slope of the curve at x equals negative 0 0.5 is a negative 1. And if x is equal to positive 0 0.5, so if we're going to substitute 0 0.5 to the expression of y prime, so that will now give us positive value. So y prime is a positive one. Right? So as x increases, there is a change in sign from negative to positive. And if that is the case, then this point zero one is a minimum point. So for the next step here, we're going to locate the point of inflection. And in locating the point of inflection, we need to solve for y double prime and set it to 0, right? So y prime is equal to 4x all over 1 minus x squared quantity squared. And if we're going to get the second derivative of the given function, we now have 1 minus x squared raised to 2 multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of 4x minus 4x multiplied by the derivative with respect to x of 1 minus x squared raised to 2 all over 1 minus x squared raised to the fourth power, right? So this is the formula if the given function is in the form of u over v. So this is now equal to 1 minus x squared raised to 2 multiplied by the derivative of 4x, which is equal to 4, minus 4x, multiplied by the derivative of uh, 1 minus x squared raised to 2, which is equal to 2, 1 minus x squared, multiplied by negative 2x, right? So the derivative of 1 minus x squared. All over 1 minus x squared raised to the fourth power. In the numerator, we can factor out uh, 4 and 1 minus x squared. So if we're going to bring out 4 multiplied by 1 minus x squared, the remainder in this term will be 1 minus x squared minus the remainder in this term, 
would be uh, 2x, right? So that will be 2x multiplied by negative 2x. And that will now be all over 1 minus x squared raised to the 4th power. Now we can cancel out 1 minus x squared here and this will be reduced to 3. So the resulting expression will now be 4 multiplied by, alright, so this will now be 1 minus negative 2x multiplied by negative 2x will give us positive 4x squared plus negative x squared, so that will give us plus 3x squared all over 1 minus x squared raised to the third power. So this is now the expression of y double prime. Right? So if we're going to set y double prime to 0, this will now be 0 equals 4 multiplied by 1 plus 3x squared all over 1 minus x squared raised to the third power. And if we're going to multiply both sides by 1 minus x squared raised to 3, this will give us 0 equals 4 multiplied by 1 plus 3x squared. Now, in here, if uh, this will uh, simplify further, we have 0 equals 1 plus 3x squared. Right? Because if we're going to divide both sides by 4, this will give us 0 equals 1 plus 3x squared. And in here, if we're going to solve for the value of x in this expression, we're going to transpose 1 to the left side, so that will be negative 1 equals 3x squared. And if we're going to divide both sides by 3, we have negative 1 over 3 equals x squared. And if we're going to extract the square root on both sides, this will give us a positive and negative imaginary value. And if x is a positive and negative imaginary value, then we can say that there is no point of inflection here. Right? So no point of inflection. Meaning, the curve will not change its concavity. So for the last step is to determine the behavior of the graph in each region. Right? So in here, we have a rational fraction, so the number of regions depends on the vertical asymptotes and the x-intercept. So if we're going to go back to our solution here, x-intercepts are... Alright, so we have no x-intercept here, and the vertical asymptotes are negative 1 and positive 1. So we have two vertical asymptotes here. Therefore, the number of regions will be equal to 3. Right? So the number of regions will be equal to 3. What are these regions? So for region 1, if this is your x-axis, this is your negative 1, this is your positive 1. Right? So because uh, here lies uh, the vertical asymptote and here also lies another vertical asymptote, so the regions that we're going to determine will now be this region, right? This region and this region. So this will now be x less than negative 1, right? So for this region, for this region, we have x greater than negative 1 but less than 1. And for this region, we have x greater than positive 1. So if x is less than negative 1, again, we bring out our calculator here and we just input the expression of the given function. So that is 1 minus or plus x squared. And this will be 1 minus x squared. Right? So if x is less than negative 1, say we have negative 2, Right, so the value of y is um, negative, right? So that means to say that in this region, right? So in this region, y is negative. How about in between negative 1 and positive 1? So if we're going to substitute a value in between negative 1 and positive 1, say a value which is 0 0.5, 
then y is positive. Alright? And if x is greater than positive 1, so say we substitute a value of x equals 2 because x uh, equals 2 is greater than x equals 1, the value of y is negative. Alright? So, that means to say that if this is your Cartesian plane, right? We have x and we have y. And if this is x equals negative 1 and this is x equals 1, so these are your vertical asymptotes. Alright? So the behavior of the graph in this region is negative. That means to say that the graph is located below the x-axis. In this region, x is in between negative 1 and 1, y is positive, so the graph lies above the x-axis. Right? And for this region, y is negative, the graph lies below the x-axis. Now, time to sketch y equals 1 plus x squared all over 1 minus x squared. First, let's have our Cartesian plane here. We have the x and y axis, and we're just going to label them with equal scaling. Since there are no x-intercepts in the given function, the graph will not cross the x-axis. And for the y-intercept, which is equal to 1, let us just plot the point in there. The critical point is located at 0, 1, and it is a minimum point. There is no point of inflection here, so we're just going to skip this step. For the horizontal asymptote, it is y equals negative 1. Thus, the horizontal asymptote is located here. For the vertical asymptotes, we have x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. And for the regions, if x is less than negative 1, y is negative. Thus, the graph lies below the x-axis. In the region x is greater than negative 1 but less than positive 1, y is positive. Thus, the graph lies above the x-axis. And for the region, where x is greater than positive 1, y is negative. Thus, the graph lies below the x-axis. Now that we know the behavior of the graph in each region, and considering that the curve is symmetrical with respect to the y-axis, this is now the appearance of the curve. Notice that in all of the regions, the curve will approach the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, but it will never cross it at any finite distance. 